готов порядок, статус готова. Выдана команда, ключ на старт. Минута до контакта подъема. Принято, что ответ, готовы к старту. Рад слышать. Зажигание. Главное, подъем. Пошла съемка. Все работает прекрасно. Two spacecraft trying to rendezvous in orbit is a little like target shooting from 10 million miles away. You're moving through millions of cubic miles of space with two relatively small spacecraft, and they have to come within inches of the precise docking point. 
It takes only 11 minutes to get from the launch pad in Baikonur up to low Earth orbit, but it can take anywhere from six hours to two days to rendezvous with the space station. They use radar transponders, they use communications and computers, but ultimately, it's eyeball to eyeball. It's not easy to do. Final approach towards the poise module. Getting confirmation the core's antenna has been retracted under 10 meters away. Contact and capture confirmed. The one year crew has arrived. Look at Crit, Mojo to Prince. Print it, we run in the Kyle Kornienko saying hello to their crewmates and hello to their home for the next 12 months in space. All crew members now aboard the International Space Station. Hi, Dad. Hey, Charlotte, how are you? <laughs> it was good. It was beautiful. We love you. Yeah, I love you guys, too. Do <laughs> You know, I often try to describe what this uh, space station is like and the, uh, you know, the engineering miracle that it is. I think of it more of a Navy vessel than it is a, uh, you know, an aircraft or a spacecraft for that matter. The ISS is like no other job of building we've ever done. Merely getting your hardware to the construction site requires rocket ships. It took over a hundred launches and over a hundred spacewalks to assemble. It's a million pounds over the size of a football field flying around the Earth 17,500 miles an hour in a vacuum. And it works. The space station is like a lab and an outpost all rolled into one. So the space station has been continuously occupied since the first crew went up over 15 years ago. It's kind of amazing that there are people all the time in space and they're going over our heads multiple times a day and we have no idea they're there. There's multiple what we call modules or parts to the space station. They look like big soda cans that are all linked together. But inside, they have four flat surfaces. And un unlike here on Earth, where you walk on the floor and you have walls and then you have a ceiling, when you're in space, it's all the same. It's like a five-bedroom house. We've actually heard from crew members that um, they can lose somebody or lose track of where somebody is, and they actually have to go floating around to find, where did that person get off to? So it's, it's that big. It's a huge facility, and so it's six of us up there, we have plenty of space. We also have a little bit of a personal space, which is uh, our crew quarters. It's about the size of an old uh, phone booth. You, you sleep in there, it gets pretty dark when you close the doors. The funny thing is, is they're all in a different orientation. One person standing up, one would be what you would think would be upside down. So it's, it's very different from a Earth feel to what you would think. And then we have another module which has uh, our exercise equipment. It's kind of like the big gym up there. 
the one thing that we don't have is a shower. So, you know, when, when they need to clean up, they're using washcloths with soap and water, that kind of thing. So they need to sort of find a corner off by themselves to do, to do things like that. Yeah, I actually have the perfect hair for space, which is none, because I see my colleagues washing it and it looks quite the challenge. The hardest thing about um, using the space station as a laboratory is just that it takes so much of an engineering structure to keep it operating safely. You know, we have all of the life support system, the crew members have to recycle their own water and redrink it, do all the cleanliness, they have to do all of those things just to keep themselves alive in this harsh environment. And then on top of that, we want them to make discoveries and carry out experiments. So they become the hands and the eyes and the ears for the scientists on the ground. See, we got some uh, cream spinach, asparagus, and grilled chicken. It's gonna go on a tortilla. I haven't had the grilled chicken yet, so I don't know what to expect. I don't remember the grilled chicken from last time. Go ahead, Samantha. Yeah. There's our table little messy looking but very functional and it's not parallel to the floor it's at a 45 degree angle because it can be and it saves space put the hot sauce on the tortilla Actually, I'll put the chicken in there first. It's kind of, it's wet enough to stick. My spoon. Ah. Can't let the uh, little droplets get too far. Surface tension is very important. If we didn't have surface tension in space, we'd be in big trouble in a lot of areas. Yeah. Oh. Oh, man. I'm not paying attention. Yeah, that's, I should have told you that's the danger of that. It's the danger of filming you eating dinner. She's got the fancy stuff. <laughs> I have a piece of chicken on a tortilla with some, <laughs> with some hot sauce. Hers is made by a chef. Yep. And it's good, is is best before July 2016. This is probably best before July 2013. It was. <laughs> Rehydrating my drink. Ready to go. You know, it was interesting seeing how the space station, uh, by and large, uh, does not look like it aged uh, four years since I was here last. This is where I live now, and uh, I'll come home someday, but uh, from my perspective, I live and work here now. I'm gonna be here for a long time, and uh, as such, I just kinda have to pace myself. Station, this is Houston ACR. Thank you, that concludes our event.